Okay, so those toms here, five of them, that's at least three too many, right? At um, least. <laughs> it's, um, those were recorded with a microphone that I used a lot at the time called the AKG C35, which uh, coming back to it, I'm not that much of a fan actually. Uh, I remember it to sound better. Would you have a go-to tom mic of course? <sighs> Uh, I usually use either 421s, which is not the best sounding microphone, but it usually seems to just work really good in the track. And um, these CADs, 147, something like that, which is like the other end of the scale compared to the 421, so it's very big sounding. And sometimes that's exactly what I want, and sometimes I want the more rock tom with the 421 vibe. The C535 is a condenser, and I used it a lot, uh, but they started to fart out, like they couldn't handle the uh, the pressure uh, all the time, so so I, I stopped using them. And I, there is some plastic thing going on in the high end that I think, you know, doesn't really fit this, this track that well, but uh, I guess they're pretty good sounding, but not perhaps the best for this track. Let's see if I'm just talking bullshit or if I actually agree with myself. So uh, panning, um, there's no rule. I know some people listen in the overheads where the toms are. I don't do that. I position the toms where I think makes sense for them to be, depending on how much is played on the different thing. I, I don't never put a tom completely in the middle because it just there will be fills where that will be a problem against the uh, snare. Uh, sometimes I even automate the panning differently for different fills. Don't tell anyone, uh, the drummers, about that, but sometimes I do that. Don't worry, no one's watching. <laughs> Just because, uh, you know, I, I need a better spread on, on a certain fill. And sometimes if, if a drummer hits like a 16, 18 or 14, 16 on one side, for, you know, like a, like a happening thing, flammy or not, I would take one of those and actually pan over to the other side, so I get that like a stereo sensation instead. Uh, like some drummers, drummers would actually have a setup like that. So, let's see what we got. We already have quite a lot of toms in the mix just by not even bringing them up. We'll see how if that makes sense or not. There's a little bit of this plastic sensation here that I'm not such a big fan of myself and it's going to be hard to do anything about it, um, but um, that's how it is. And when it comes to Tom processing and Tom EQing, if I use like a 421, I would process that quite heavily, like bringing out all the mids, you know, add a lot of high end to it. If it's with the condensers, the top end usually cannot take too much more top end, so you need to be a little careful about that. And it also depends on the style. Sometimes you need to like bring out a lot of mids for them to, to sound metal enough. And sometimes um, I prefer if they sound a little more rockish or popish. Uh, and this song could probably handle both ends of that spectrum. I'm gonna solo listen a little bit, God forbid. I've mixed two albums with a band called God Forbid, actually. Yeah. new band on next month. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Uh, you don't high cut toms, but I'm trying to get rid of a little bit of that plastic thing here by, by doing that. Um, removing some mids. On occasion, I could also, if, if I think there is a transient that's becoming a problem, I could also use some sort of a transient designer or transient shaper 
to actually um, get rid of some of that click as well, uh, if, if it would bother me. But uh, usually it would be more, I mean, if it's recorded with a 421 or something, usually it's the other end of the spectrum where you actually need to add a little punch to the, to the toms, perhaps. try this. I'm also gonna compress uh, the toms a little bit and uh, the SSL compressor is a pretty good one for that. If I kick this in and I use the fast attack and um, a sort of a moderate ratio and then just bring down the threshold. See down here how much compression I'm using. I can easily go up until almost 10 on that to make the hits a little bit more even, like fastest um, release, fastest attack. It doesn't always work, but right now it seems to work. Do the same here. Thirteen inch, this must be so boring to watch. Not at all. <laughs> Especially on those bigger toms, I can hear this plastic thing that I don't like. So I can hear that it's up there like 15k or something. So um, the slope of these SSL filters are so, what do you call it? Not sharp, but uh, non sharp. <laughs> Um, rounded off, so you can actually, Gradual. yeah, you can actually come down quite a lot on that. Uh, so use your ears rather than the numbers for, for, for that one. The, the, the word we're looking for is wide. You're so wide. Yeah, wide. Yeah. It's... So typically, I would like throw on a lot of treble, but I don't feel I can do that right now. So. But I'm gonna push a little bit more of the mids. So I don't want them to sound too scooped. I want them to sound a little more Led Zeppelin than. Yeah, whatever. Band. Yeah, especially here on 16. Let's take some of that off. Let's compress it. some mid. Use a little bit of it. And this is a lot about taste as well, you know, how, how you want your toms to sound. Uh, let's go back. I think I missed the compression here. Yeah. Okay. They're definitely not bored. Okay, cool. Okay, seems to sit a little better now. Um, I usually don't go in like this solo listening. I usually try to listen in the track, hear what needs to be done and, and do it. But um, since this required a little bit of fixing, I thought it would make sense to solo listen. But um, it is a hard trick tip to, to follow, but try to not solo listen too much when you mix. It's tough. It is tough. It's tough for me as well. I would say that and then when you would see me actually solo listen a lot, but uh, I still feel that that's a good like it is. dogma too. Um, okay. It's just easy to go down rabbit holes in solo. Yeah. But sure, sometimes it can also be good. Like for example, when I brought in those Hyatt and Ride mics, it's hard for me to know exactly what kind of damage it could create by bringing in additional microphones. 
if I don't solo listen and see the amount of low end like kick and snare in there um, and that might not be an issue at all but um, it could be good to just get a glance and see if there's anything we can filter out without creating too much um, hassle. So uh, we brought in some toms, let's listen to a few other places. This is all taste how loud uh, the toms are gonna be and also how how much treble I might end up use, putting a little bit more treble or like high mids to the toms to get them to cut through but I'm gonna start like that. It also I usually put some reverb like both non-linear or gated reverb and some reverb on toms so I could also create the sensation of them coming being a little bigger in the end. <laughs> 